नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज एटी सिक्स इन दिस वन थ्री इवेंट्स ए बी सी आर गिवन एंड सम कंडीशन आर गिवन लाइक पी ऑफ एक्जैक्टली ए और बी P of exactly one of B or C and similarly C of A. All these three are been given as one by four, and it has been given that probability that all three events occur simultaneously is one by sixteen. So we have to find the probability that at least one of the events occurs. So basically, we have been asked to find P of A union B union C. Okay. So we'll write these statements mathematically. p of exactly 1 of a or b occurs that is 1 by 4 so mathematically this can be written as p of a plus p of b minus p of 2 times p of a intersection b this is given as 1 by 4 similarly p of b plus p of c minus 2 times p of b intersection c that is also given as 1 by 4 and p of a plus p of c minus 2 times p of a intersection c is given as 1 by 4 Now we can add all these three, so that will give us two times P A plus P B plus P C minus P A intersection B minus P A intersection C minus P B intersection C. And on RHS we'll get one by four plus one by four plus one by four. That will be three by four. So therefore, P of A plus P of B plus P of C minus P of A intersection B minus P of B intersection C minus P of C intersection A is equal to three by eight. So, and it is given since P of A intersection B intersection C as one by sixteen. Therefore. P of A union B union C will be sum of these two, so that will be equal to three by eight plus one by sixteen, and if you simplify this, that will give you answer seven by sixteen. So this is our final answer seven by sixteen. So the correct option for this question will be the first one. Next question is question number eighty-seven. In this one, it is given that a set of eleven numbers from zero to ten, and two numbers are being selected. So we have to find the probability that their sum as well as absolute difference are both multiple of four. So first of all, total number of selections. Total number of selections. Will be eleven C two out of eleven. We'll select two, so eleven C two, and that will give us fifty five. Next, we'll have to find number of favorable selections. Number of favorable selections. So we'll have to just count out. so what will be the favorable selections one of them will be 0,4 one can be 0,8 one can be 4,8 one can be 2,6 one can be 2,10 and one can be 6,10 
so these six selections will be favorable for our question so therefore the required probability required probability will be six upon fifty five so our answer is six upon fifty five and the correct option for this question will be the fourth option next question is from trigonometry so we'll have to find the value of cos 4x so first we'll start with the given question and we can simplify this this 5 we can expand this so that will give you 5 tan square x minus 5 cos square x 5 cos square x we can take it to that side so that will give you 2 cos 2x plus 5 cos square x plus 9 now this 2 cos 2x we can expand using the formula of cos 2x and tan square x can be written as secant square x minus 1 so this will give us 9 cos square x plus 7 okay so now we can put cos square x equal to t so that equation becomes 5 upon t equal to 9t plus 12 now if you solve this we'll get the values of t as 1 by 3 or minus 5 by 3 so we know that the maximum value of cos x is 1 and minimum value is minus 1. So of course this solution we have to reject. So cos square x is equal to 1 by 3. Now what we have to find is the value of cos 4x. So first of all we can find the value of cos 2x. So cos 2x can be written as 2 cos square x minus 1 so we'll put the value of cos square x from here so that will give you 2 by 3 minus 1 so that will be minus 1 by 3 so from here we can find the value of cos 4x so that will be 2 cos square 2x minus 1 so this will give us 2 by 9 minus 1 so that will be minus 7 by 9. So this is our final answer cos 4x will be equal to minus 7 by 9. So the correct option for the given question is the third option. Next question is from height and distance. So we have to draw the diagram. Okay. So first we'll draw the diagram. So it is saying that let a vertical tower AB have its end A on the level ground. So let's say this is the level ground. This is that vertical tower AB. Its end A is on the level ground. B is in the air. Okay. And it is saying C is the midpoint of AB. So let's say C is somewhere here. Next it is saying PB any point on the ground. P is any point on the ground. You can join. PB and PC and it's also given that AP is equal to 2AB so let us assume that this is X this is X because C is the midpoint of AB and AP is 2 times AB so therefore this will become 4X okay next is angle BPC this particular angle is beta let's say this angle is theta so we have been asked to find tan beta so first of all very simple can find out tan theta tan theta will be equal to AC upon AP so that will give you X upon 4x so that will be 1 by 4 next is if we find out tan of theta plus beta so from the diagram we can see tan of theta plus beta will be equal to 2x upon 4x that will be 1 by 2. 
So now we can expand this using the formula of tan a plus b. So that will give you tan theta plus tan beta upon 1 minus tan theta tan beta then that is 1 by 2. Now tan theta we have already calculated so we can put the value of tan theta over here that was 1 by 4 plus tan beta upon 1 minus tan beta into 1 by 4 is 1 by 2. Now from here we can, it is very simple linear equation in tan beta we can solve this and that will give you answer tan beta equal to 2 by 9. So the correct answer for this is 2 by 9 and the option for this question will be second option. Last question we have to find out whether the given statement is equivalent to not P implies Q, P implies not Q, fallacy or tautology. So the best method in these type of question is we form a truth table. So we'll form a truth table for this. Okay, so first let's say is for P, next is for Q, next we can draw for P implies Q, then not P implies Q, then not P implies Q, implies Q. And then the final one, P implies Q, implies not P, implies Q, and implies Q, as it is given in the question. So for P and Q, we'll take all possible combination, true, 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 false, false, true, and last one is false false okay so these are the first two columns the second column is simply p implies q so this will be true false true true now similarly we can draw for not p implies q so that will be true 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 false now from here we can draw the fifth column so that will be true, false, true, true. And therefore, using these two, second last and the last, uh, third last one, we can draw the final column that will be true, 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 true. So therefore, you can see that in the final column, all the entries are true. So that means that the given statement is always true. Such a statement is called as tautology. So therefore, the correct answer for this question will be the fourth option, tautology.